In today's video, we're going to be reacting to my very first makeup tutorial. This was me in 2016 feeling my fucking oats, bitch. We're gonna watch it, we're gonna go through it, we're gonna critique my techniques, and I'm gonna do my makeup along the way to show you how much has changed. So if you wanna see 2016 me and see how I got this look, then keep on watching. Let's get started, shall we? So this video was filmed in 2016 and it is titled a full glam makeup tutorial. We'll see about that. Let's go. Hi guys, Curly Fleek. Welcome to another video, finally. So I just want to quickly say thank you guys. First of all, I sound like a child. I am a child. So I've never actually done a proper makeup tutorial on the YouTube. The first one, this was the first makeup tutorial I ever did. I'm nervous. So the first thing I'm taking is this Revlon Smoothing Primer. Dot, 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 dot. Ooh, that primer was very, very, like, heavy silicone base. Not nice underneath makeup. I'm pretty sure my nan gave it to me, so I used it. To take my damp beauty blender, and yes, this is the original batch. Just patting my whole face. Okay, so that Revlon one, was it Revlon? I think so. That one claimed to be pore filling. So instead, I'm just going to take my Benefit Professional. This one is pore filling as well, but it's not silicone, so nothing's going to slip. Oh, it's been a while since I used a pore primer. I usually just do hydrating shit. And then I used my damp beauty blender to press it in. I don't know what the point of that was, but we're doing it. So the next primer I've got is this Dr. Lemon's... E Two primers. Let's go. Channel Youth Blur Pore Filling Primer. All right. But I just swipe this on my cheeks and then tap. That's this fucking background music is so gay, like, oh my god. Really mattifying primer, so I'll just press that in. Okay, so that was a mattifying primer. I'm not the biggest fan of mattifying primers anymore. This is like a recent discovery of mine. However, we are meant to be following this. So I'm gonna take my Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless. I've actually never tried this, so we will see how it goes. It's coming out like a cream. Very similar to the one I used in that video, actually, if I remember correctly. Very similar. I remember that primer because it felt like a cream and the second you put it on, it grabbed and that's exactly what this Maybelline one is doing. I can feel it. Anyways, let's go on to whatever the fuck I'm gonna do next. So I'll just press that in. So now we're ready for color correction. Okay, so I've got these three LA Girl ones. I've done a video on how I got these for free before. I just take the... Quick note, you know those like survey websites where you'd fill out surveys and then you would get gift cards? I did that and it literally worked. I got a gift card from Fish Pond, the scammiest website in the world, but I got color correctors. Green. Dab it on the corners of my nose. So then I take the red, the dark orange, and focus on the outsides of my dark circles. And then I take the yellow one and really focus it on the inner corners. More. So color correcting is done for me. So that is ugly. Okay, I haven't touched green color corrector for years now and I don't have it. So I am gonna skip that step and I'm not that red in there anymore. Anyway, I used way too much, way too much green that is gonna make this area look gray. And that orange is so dark and I've just put it all like here. I haven't even just focused it to my under eyes. I've literally put it everywhere. That's useless. Listen, I'm not gonna do that because it's gonna ruin my makeup. What I do now, if I need to color correct, I'll use a darker, more warm toned concealer instead of a dark orange. If you're of a deeper skin tone, a dark orange will work for you because it's matching. I'm very, very pale at the moment, so that is not the go. We're gonna take this Benefit Boing concealer and I'm just gonna take a very tiny bit of it. The depth and the warmth of this concealer is just gonna help to color correct those under eyes without loading them up with dark orange. And I'm just gonna pat this in with my finger just focusing on the under eye. You don't need to bring this out everywhere. Only correct where you need it. Can you blame me though? This is the era where everyone was putting orange all over their face and it was meant to fix all of your problems and pay your bills and taxes for you. See that tiny amount of light coverage concealer has already brightened brightened the under eye quite severely. Anyway, let's carry on. So then I just take this BOIS matte foundation. I really need more foundation. So, okay, great. So I put it all in the back of my hand like this. That is enough for about 30 faces. That BYS foundation is pure shit. It's, oh, I haven't used it in a while, but I don't need to, to remember how awful it was. It's very slippy. That cheap silicone matte foundation feel, that's what that was. But we're just gonna see how I apply it and then we'll move on and dot it on. I avoid the under eye area when dotting it just because the area is for the concealer. 
Oh, I agree with that. You know, that's a big thing now on TikTok. It was like a big trend that went around. Don't apply foundation to your under eye. Save that for concealer. So I guess I was right. That was ahead of my time. Not the Jeffree Star background music, oh my god. So that's not a bad shade. It looks a little bit ashy, but that's probably because I filmed it with like a $20 camera or something. I obviously don't have that foundation anymore, but it is matte. Again, my obsession over matte makeup products is long gone. I don't fucking like it. I have oily skin, but matte products just settle in my lines. They make my pores look bigger. It's just not very nice. I know I said I was meant to be following this, but I literally refuse. So what we're gonna do is critique it, and then we're gonna show you what I do now. How about that? So recently I've been trying out this RCMA palette. This is full of cream foundation. I didn't like it initially at first, but I just wasn't educated enough on how to use a formula like this. It's quite different. I'm not sure if it's gonna work on top of all this mattifying primers, but we're gonna go for it. So what I do is I take kind of around these shades here, and then I mix in a little bit of yellow. I do that all in the palette. I literally just dip, 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 and then a little bit of yellow, and then I apply this to the face. And now that I kind of have this all on my face, I'm just going to take my damp beauty sponge and begin to press her in. And this is actually working phenomenally on top of the primers that I use, so that is good to know. And I avoided the under eye, so I listened to one thing that I said. Anyway, let's move on. So I'm just taking this LA Pro Conceal in Light Ivory. I love these concealers. They Listen, I don't use that concealer anymore, but it actually is a stunning concealer. Actually, I do. I have one, but this is in the shade Fawn, and it is miles too dark. Oh, I should have used that as color corrector. Would it would have matched the video? Whatever. I've tried to blend my face out with a stippling brush, but I freaking hate it. And we're not bringing the concealer out either. We don't want the face to look wider. Take it on the cupid's bow, out the corners of my lips, and just do a crush on the chin. We are really painting for the back fucking row. And this is usually my highlight. I blend out. Okay, I'm fucking gagging at the under eye triangles because it was so 2016 to do that. And I love how I said, I, like, I'm not bringing it out, but the triangles are sitting here on my face. I still actually draw triangles now, but I bring them in. Why don't I just show you? Let, let's do it. I'm gonna use this palette again as concealer, and I'm gonna mix the lighter shade in here with the white. I'm just gonna start by laying down the light one, and this is the shape I do now. I still kind of stick with triangles, but I just bring them in, because I still I still think the same way. I don't want to make my face wider. I want to keep the light in here, <laughs> but that placement, maybe not the best thing. The forehead looks like fucking fire works. I don't do that anymore. I literally only do here. If I do it out like that, it's going to make my forehead look gigantic. And I don't really do under there anymore. But now I'm going to take the white shade and I'm just going to pop that right in the corners. It's just going to really, really bring the under eyes forward. And of course, I'm going to take my damp sponge again. I'm going to start with my forehead. Light taps. You Don't be too rough. Everything else and then the under eyes last because they tend to crease more. Then I do you see how I'm like going like that? I'm like pushing and then dragging. What did I just say? I said be gentle. It's the triangle side, and I blend my forehead out like this. You see I'm spinning the sponge with it, so it really gives that triangle glow. Fuck your smart owl. And then the eyes, I get my air spun powder ready. The lid's actually got some powder in it, but that's my air spun powder. Okay, I actually remember hating this powder. The only reason why I used it in this video is because Patrick Starr used to use it. And I wanted everyone to know that I had it as well. I actually fucking hated it. It smells like old nanny. It gives me a headache. It makes me look pink. And I'm not pink, I'm olive. And it really, really dries out the skin. I don't have that anymore. But le let's keep watching. Really, really good for setting. Take the What did you just say? Some powder in it, but that's my ear spun powder. It's really, really good for setting. Take the Liar. triangle part yet again. Okay, Notice how I said I don't want to bring it out to make my face wider, but then I end up blending it up there. Girl, make up your mind. A part to do. You can still see the green in my in the corners of my nose. Yeah, because so you put the whole bottle on, bro. Then I just take the loose powder, dip the beauty blender in so it's covered in the powder, and really set those under eyes right after. 
Ooh, that's made shivers go down my spine. You blend the concealer up. I don't like to be a Patrick star and take a powder puff and just put this all over my face because my face turns white. So then I take the little bit of powder that I put in the lid. Okay, okay, we're just gonna stop there before I get too far ahead. That was the most disgusting thing I've ever experienced of my entire lifetime. Let me explain it to you while I blend this out. When you, first of all, use a powder that's that thick and dry, second of all, you pack that much on are we making concrete on our face if you watch my tiktoks you know my whole thing now is when i sit with powder you dip in with a powder puff blow it off or tap it off if you're working on a client and you want to be sanitary and then i lightly press it on because when you overload concealer especially a liquid one like the pro conceal it congeals and it turns into concrete on your face and it just no no. Anyways, look at how beautiful this RCMA is. I'm really disappointed that we're not cream bronzing or cream contouring. Um, so I am going to do a little bit of that. So again, I'm going to use this palette. We're going to do some bronzing first before we get into contouring. So I'm just going to take, you know, some of these shades. I'm just going to pick some. Let's just do those four. They're a bit deeper and warmer and my face is super, super, super pale at the moment. And it almost looks kind of flat. So we just need a little bit of bronze. Not too much because it can start to look just like strange on paler skin. And then I'm gonna use the end of my beauty blender just to really press that in. I remember I actually used to hate cream bronzing, cream contouring, whatever, because I couldn't do it. I was I was basically doing everything wrong. I was using a really, really dark concealer and I didn't know how to place it and how to blend it. But as I did it more and more and started to practice and learn, I realized that I was missing out. It's incredible. Now this is something that I never used to do. In fact, I only started doing it within the past like three months and that is like actual contouring, not bronzing. I'm gonna take the RCMA contour palette and I'm gonna take these two shades here. They're gray tones. And since I'm very, very pale at the moment, these are gonna help shape my face a lot better than bronzer. But I really wanna add some sculpt to my face. And if I did that with the color that I just used, it's just gonna look like orange stripes. And I just tap this in with a brush right in the hollows of my cheek. And you see how that's instantly adding definition? And for my nose, I just take the gray shade and I just tap it on with my pinky and kind of bring it down the bridge. I'm not too precise with it. It just stops the nose from looking so white and bright. Very, very natural, but it's just given the face a little bit of life. Now, I just need a quick reminder about this powder. So then I take the little bit of powder that I put in the lid, that's why a little I bit. couldn't show you guys oh, yeah. the lid. Okay. I take a brush like this like a stippling brush. This one's from BH Cosmetics. Tap it. It is not from BH Cosmetics. It is from AliExpress.com. In there, and really tap the excess powder off and just press it. And make sure to brush it off. Make sure you're gonna bake my nose. That is unbelievable. First of all, using a brush that's small and that dense to apply powder to the rest of the face, one, isn't convenient, and two, it doesn't apply the powder in an airbrushed way, especially me going like that. It's just gonna move everything underneath. Here is how I work with powder nowadays. So I'm gonna take the RCMA No Color Setting Powder because I haven't put any tan on today and I'm very pale. All of my other powders kind of have a yellow tinge to them and it's not gonna look very nice. This looks white, it's not, it's translucent. I'm just gonna do one final reinforce of the highlighter under the eye and blend it out one side at a time. I'm gonna pick up some of the powder on a little powder puff that is miles too much. So I'm just gonna pat it on the back of my hand and really get it into the puff. And then once I've done that, that is much better. And then I will lightly start to press this area and then move up to the under eye. Too much powder right under the eye is gonna cause weird shit to happen. Your makeup's gonna congeal. It's actually gonna crease more. It's better to use less. And I feel like we're all kind of learning that with like the new like clean girl makeup, but we are certainly not baking. I don't even know how I did that with the airspun powder. Like if I did that now, I feel like my skin would crack up and literally fall off my face. And I'm just going to use this to set the rest of my face. And I'm using a powder puff. I'm not using a brush. Anyway, let's see what we are doing next. Moving on to contour. This is a W7 contour kit. I got it from Posty. It was like 15 bucks. It came with an excellent brush. I think I actually stole that. So don't do that. But just being honest. Sure, it's just this little tiny black brush. That was a good brush, okay? That was a good brush. It's angled, it's so freaking soft. I just like to mix the two darker shades. Start. That palette actually did have a contour shade in it. That darker one was gray, but I ended up just mixing them together. I don't really know what I was doing. I don't even know if it really matters, but let's keep watching. Uh, 
I love how my face is literally white because that powder is overwhelming my camera. So once you finish the contour of your cheeks, you want to take a powder puff. This one's really dirty. You just want to dip into your loose powder or your highlighting powder. Oh no. Oh. And sharpen that contour. And I'll just keep this here while I do the rest of my contour. Okay, carving it up with powder? No. No. What that's going to do is it's going to make this area look really white and it is going to squaring up your jawline which is fine if you want that but even then it's still better to just do that with concealer instead of packing on powder and i find anyway it just looks really unnatural to have the darkest point of your face which is right here and then a highlight right underneath it the comparison is just too stark do you know what i mean for my powders i don't really use powder contour nowadays honestly because i don't have one if i had one i probably would i just use my fenty beauty bronzer and i take this on a really really big brush i don't really use small angled brushes like that anymore i would if i had a contour powder but i just use this brush and i just kind of press that again i'm very pale so i'm being quite careful with it because i don't want to look orange but i do need a little bit of warmth i'm not baking with powder and i don't have bake to dust off so let's see whatever the fuck we do next i'm scared we're gonna take an excessive amount oh. and press it under there because are you as if it wasn't enough before really now we are moving on to eyes <sighs> i don't have any words that's fucking rank no all i'm gonna say is no let's see what I, let's move on taking this palette it's very very shiny this here I got that palette from AliExpress. I got a lot of my makeup from AliExpress. But it's because eyeshadow was so expensive and I didn't want to drop so much money on palettes. And I brought that one and it's a piece of fucking shit. Anyway, what are we doing? By BH Cosmetics. This is the 80 It's not by BH. No, stop. <sighs> I was such a little fucking liar. I think I'll just do a simple natural simple look. Natural so look. I'm just taking this shade here. With that powder one. under your eyes? Kind of I don't think so. Shade and put that in the crease. I forgot to pr That's a copper shimmer. A copper shimmer in my hooded eyes crease. And my eye! Normally I just prime my eyes with this. I will prime this eye so you can see the difference, but... Pro Conceal is not the best thing to prime your eyes with because it is, it's got like oils in it and your eyelids are very oily. Unless you've got dry eyelids, it might actually work for you, but me, my eyelids are very oily and it's going to crease and the eyeshadow is not going to look enjoyable anyway how i prime my eyes is i just take the concealer and i take my pinky and i just pat it that is way way too much i just said that that concealer is going to crease and if i'm going to put that much on an eyelid girl no the brush put in some ear spun powder so <sighs> help help i need help first of all i know everyone used to do concealer and then set it with translucent powder before the eyeshadow but there's a reason why that dropped out of style very quickly one it makes your eyelids super dry especially with the amount that i'm putting on here your eyelids are gonna go crepey second of all you're loading it up with so much powder that your powder eyeshadows are gonna have such a hard time sticking to all of that it's either gonna go patchy or they're not gonna stick or probably both anyways it's gonna take this dark brown they're all shimmers. On my lid. They're all shimmers. That's not nice. And then I'll take this little like glitter packing brush and take the white. The white is phenomenal. Look. No, it's not. Tip, tip, tip. I know for a fact that arm. it fucking wasn't. Like, look at that freaking highlight. Wow. Amazing. Tapping oh, it very, wow. very lightly and taking that under my brow bone. Like, white is not, unless you're like pale, pale, white is not nice under the eyebrow. It can go ashy because your natural skin tone underneath is darker and then when you put a white on top it can go ashy and it just doesn't look right and just dust off i think we might be powder. finished eyeshadow so all the areas oh, can that you we see how baked. gray i look and how dry and how like you like you can see Literally, all the spots the on my nose make them move is oil or makeup remover all right so now oh, that oh, oh hold on can you see how dark my under eye is one that's because I used a corrector that was way too dark and way too orange. And then I loaded a fuck ton of concealer on top and then choked it with an incomprehensible amount of powder. That is why my under eyes look like that. The powder has basically sucked up the concealer and then when I brush it off, it's taken off the concealer. Also, it's dried out the under eye, so all the makeup under there is cracking. And when makeup cracks, you can see through the cracks. That's why from back here, 
It looks great. Ah, uh, nia na, that's not beautiful, darling. We're gonna do a very, very quick look, like I did in this video, but we're gonna do it my way now. I'm gonna prime my eyes using the Sigma eyeshadow primer. Now this is a real eyeshadow primer, it's wax based, so it's gonna block the oils that are gonna try and come through, and it's gonna prevent creasing. And then I'm just gonna take that everywhere. Just to show how far I've come, I'm gonna use my Natasha Denona The Bronze Palette. We went from that fake cheap probably poisonous palette from aliexpress so like 20 bucks to this one which is like 200. i'm gonna take the shade ridge this is the nice warm shade for the crease and i didn't do it here but like i like to bring my crease shade down onto the under eye we've gone really really bronzy today i should have used the gray palette for this because this is looking a bit too orange but will live. And then I took a darker shade. So I'm going to take this dark brown and I'm just going to focus this over here instead of pressing it into my whole eyelid. Now that's kind of all we did in this video. I'm not going to go like too dramatic and dark. Now I'm going to go in with my other Natasha palette. I should have used this on the eyes today. I feel like this looks way too warm for how pale I am. But I'm going to take this little inner corner shade right here and I'm going to use that just to pop on the eyelid. And because I have hooded eyes, if I just keep it on the eye, you're not going to be able to see it. So I just like to bring it a little bit higher. I'm going to use that for my inner corner highlight and just a little bit on my brow bone. Anyways, let's see what we are going to do now. So now we move on to brows. I've got this clean color brow primer. It's like the budget version of the Anastasia. But <laughs> when I bought this, it was really dry and flaky. And I was like, what if oil works? So I put a couple drops of oil, let it sit overnight. And literally, dip, dip, dip. Look. Pigment. Mm -mm. I mean, come mm -mm. on. No, okay. Before we carry on, first of all, you should never put oil in your brow pomade. Brow pomade is made to dry down and stay. And what does oil do? It breaks down makeup. So yes, oil is going to make it more creamy and more pigmented, but it's going to lose its ability to dry down and stay. And then if you even touch the brow a little bit because there's oil in it, it's going to move. And they're also going to be shiny. Who the fuck wants shiny eyebrows? Let's see. I'm really scared for this. <laughs> But let's see how I fill them in. Look at like, look at the brow here. Look at how I've trained my brows to grow now. These ones, it's like I'm going like this, and they're going down. Oh, so, do you this brow <laughs> do you see how the tail of my brow is so much lower than the front? Makeup has no rules, and if you like that kind of like mopey look or that sad look, go for it. But I've always been that bad bitch that wants that pull, and that is not giving it. It looks like I'm going like this. Like, I can't even do it to the extent. Like, what the fuck? Oh, snatched. I'm just snatched. Out a bit with the spoolie. I don't know what dimension you're living in, Dylan. Yeah, it looks nice. I love that brow. Yeah. I don't. Look at me cutting out all my talking. <laughs> and I, st I still do the same fucking thing to this day. Do you guys remember when I used to do my eyebrows dark? Like, a shade lighter than black. Here's a picture. It's gonna scare you. Oh, shit. I know. Old lady in Sidious 3 realness. <sighs> that actually gave me a fright. I don't know what- I don't know why you're talking shit, bitch. They look exactly the same, but now they just look orange. Something. Oh! That is, like, the most perfect brows I've ever drawn on so far. <laughs> the most perfect brow? Are you kidding? If there's anything about my makeup journey and my face glow up or whatever, it's my brow. Thank you, God. Now for the updated brow routine. This is the Anastasia Brow Wiz pencil in the shade Granite. And what I do now is I just take the pencil and I kind of just flick upwards. And then I use the spoolie to kind of blend it all out. And nowadays I like to bring my brows in a lot closer. So I just take the pencil like this, flip it on its side, and start flicking up. Do you see the way that instantly changes my face? I just look a lot more like, bitch, like cunt, like I love it. I'm not good at putting false lashes on. I have, I've tried to and no. See, this is what I tell people in my TikTok comments when they say, I can't do this. I've tried, I've tried, I've tried. I used to be exactly the same. I just refused to learn. And now all I need to do to put a false lash on is literally just and it's on. When I tell you practice makes fucking perfect, I know that phrase is cliche, but it's cliche for a reason because it's fucking true. Fun fact, this mascara is the first piece of makeup I ever owned. That is true, and I've said it on TV, I've said it in interviews, that is like, that is the mascara that I stole from my auntie's house. If you know that story, then that is the exact bottle. 
crazy. Last thing to do is the lips. What kind of lip are we going to oh, do? Oh, okay. We've done the eyes. I am going to apply false eyelashes today because I just look a bit not complete. I'm going to take my Bad Girl Bang mascara that I bought with my money and did not steal. That was a lie. I didn't even buy this. They sent it to me. Anyways, now before I put falsies on, I'm gonna take some black eyeliner and I'm just gonna use this just to fill right in my inner corner. When you put lashes on, you obviously don't glue them right to the inner corner because they'll cut your eyes open every time you blink. But I hate seeing that gap. Sometimes I see it on TikTok, people put big lashes on, but then you can see that skin gap on the inner corner and it's not very nice. It kind of ruins the seamlessness of the makeup. So if I'm not gonna do a full wing or a full line, I'll always just put a little bit of black on that inner corner and the outer corner as well. Okay, great. So side note, I have lost my tweezers. I'm still gonna apply lashes. So I guess I might as well just show you how I apply my lashes without tweezers with my fingers. I can do it. I'd rather not, but I can do it. These are the Lily Lashes in style Paris. I'm gonna apply a thin band of the Lily Lashes lash glue. So this is how I do it. I grab just the end of the lash with my finger. I get a really weird angle so that I can line it up. I push my real lashes down and then just lean it onto the eye. A perfectly applied eyelash with the fingers. 2016 me is literally screaming right now. Let's move on to hopefully the final step. So I'm just taking this banana shade here. Just really tapping it with the brush. I thought really we said we're doing lips. Eyes, oh, like more powder under the eye. Four. Jesus Little fuck. Chin. We're not doing that. This is enough. So now we're moving on to blush. Taking this other... We said lip blush. blush. Okay, I actually forgot blush existed for a second. Yeah, this one um, is like a mauve but it's more red. And it's got gold. Essence is a good brand. I don't remember what that blush was like. I think it was very, very shimmery, which was not the best for my skin back then because I had a lot of texture. There's the blush. I love the blush. It doesn't I knew look there was that something bad. Missing. I looked. No, it I does. Like For blush today, we're going to go in with Benefits Krista. This is nice and bright. This also has a little bit of shimmer in it, but that Essence one was like borderline highlighter. This one has just enough in it just to give you a little bit of a glow. So now time for highlight. I was, I've been waiting for this. this purple fame brush here. Okay, so I just smile like that. And this highlight is freaking pigmented. Look. Did I say what I was using? I think this is an Essence one as well. I didn't fucking show the camera for what reason. Today, because I'm quite pale, I'm gonna use this Fenty Beauty How Many Carrots one. This is a beautiful white glittery one, and I'm just gonna apply this with my finger and press this in. Do you see it's quite glittery? But it's beautiful because it doesn't accentuate my texture. If I use a highlighter that's too finely milled, I find that it gets in my pores and in my like little ice pick scars and then it reflects the light and then you can see all that texture whereas one like this that's more of a thicker glitter base it doesn't settle and it just looks like plastic so for lipstick i'm taking the shiseido moisture mist lipstick and moisture mist in case you didn't hear i remember this color and it was fucking ugly Shit, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just let you watch oh that looks that fucking looks nice i love this lipstick I was just about to say, that looks fucking awful. No. I don't know if you guys knew, but I do have a lime crime lipstick. Here's the box. This is where I store my lipsticks in. Okay, fuck your call. Cool. It's in the shade. No one cares. Too. Hurry up. So I think we're done. Okay, those lips look fucking shocking. The color is too stark for my face. I had no idea how to line my lips. You see how wobbly it is? I hate that. Instead, we're going to go in with lip liner. This is my obsession by Thin Lizzy. And I'm just going to use this just to shape that lip line. And then I'm going to go in with some of Anastasia's peachy nude lip gloss and just use that as our lip color. That is much better than whatever the fuck that is. Let's see what else I've got to say. Time for the poses, my favorite part. You are the love to make a When I tell you, I thought I was on television. When I did the, I was like, fuck, I'm in a movie. That's enough. One thing I've just noticed is I didn't use setting spray or setting mist. So can you imagine how dry my face looked? With that amount of powder, I would have needed this whole bottle to rehydrate my face. And even today, I'm gonna put a little bit on. Setting spray or fixing spray, whatever, whatever it is, 
whatever you want to call it, just marries all your makeup together. Let me take that out. So this is the finished look. I have improved to heights unimaginable. This is where we were in 2016, dry, unblended, fucking ugly. And here's where we are now in 2022, bitch. Let me know if you enjoyed this video. Unfortunately, that video is private, so I will not be leaving a link in the description. But let me know if you learned anything, because all I learned is that I was shit, and that I'm right when I say practice makes perfect. I mean, the proof is in the pudding, bitch. Listen. If you enjoyed this video, of course, make sure to give it a like. It tells YouTube that you like this video, and it'll help more people see it. And if you really want to be that bitch, hit that subscribe button and make sure to turn on notifications. I post YouTube videos every Sunday at 5pm New Zealand time. But anyways, I will see you next Sunday. Goodbye.